A very good evening, everyone. So today we are going to talk about the metastatic bladder cancer, what are the changes in the latest guidelines, and uh, there are very important uh, changes that we should be updated about when we are appearing for the upcoming exams. If we just uh, look at the uh, grossly the algorithm for the management of the metastatic urothelial cancer. So till now we were just talking about the first line treatment till until 2023 the recommendations were mainly on the platinum eligibility criteria first you look for whether the patient is platinum eligible or not if the patient is eligible for it go for a gc regimen okay so that was the first line treatment so there has been a level one evidence currently based on which the guideline has changed and the current guidelines what do they recommend is if the patient is eligible, you check for these eligibility criteria, that is the performance status, the GFR should be more than 30 and the organ functions like the LFT should be normal and the renal function is normal. In that case, you start the patient with the first line treatment, which is a enfotomab verotin plus a pembrolizumab. So this enfotumab is an antibody-based uh, drug and uh, there are level of one evidence will look at it, but you should remember this is, has now become, this combination with an immunotherapy, antibody immunotherapy combination has become the first line for the management of a metastatic urothelial cancer. Okay, now if the patient, now this Envotomar Veritain, the, the availability is an issue, and not only availability is an issue, but uh, if, there, if there is any contraindication as well. So if you find any of this issue, then instead of going only for pembrolizumab, in that case, you go ahead for platinum combination therapy that we were offered. Now, even in the platinum combination therapy, we don't offer just GD, okay? Our, our recommendations currently are on platinum combination with an immunotherapy, okay? So it's combination of platinum therapy with an immunotherapy and which immunotherapies are recommended is avalumab as a maintenance or as an uh, or in the form of nivolumab. So these are the two recommendations. Not one is not preferred for the other. It's or you can offer any of them. We will look at the evidences for them. For the time being, just to understand the first line of management is enfotumab with a pembrolizumab combination. If not eligible for it, go with a platinum therapy with a immunotherapy combination. If the Even if that is not eligible or immunotherapy is not available, go for it. The previous recommendation, go back to the previous guideline, which is just a GC uh, platinum uh, combination with a gemcitabin. Okay. So this is the grossly algorithm. And even if you look at this, uh, the first line treatment has always been platinum based on whether the patient is fit for platinum or not. Currently, this has now changed to whether the patient is fit for enfotoma vodatin or not. If the patient is fit for enfotoma vodatin, go ahead with it in a combination with the pembrolizumab. And if there is any contraindication to enfotoma, in that case, you go ahead with a Platinum combination chemotherapy with an immunotherapy, okay? So CPI is the recommendation with an avalumab or with a nivolumab. So you can give any of this combination in them. This is important. Your exams will be focusing on this. This was published in March 2024. So any upcoming exam, the September candidates, the November the for the uh, in the, the January candidates, all of them you should, should be aware of this publication in the NEJM. Okay, so what was what does it basically say? So it, they have compared the enfotoma vedotin with the pembrolizumab combination in metastatic cancer, urothelial cancer, and they have combined this. They have compared this with the standard GC regimen, and what they have found that. So it's almost double the improvement in the overall survival and the progression-free survival that you need to quote. So just remember the progression-free survival, the, that was the main endpoint of this trial. The enfotomab in combination with the pembrolizumab had 12.5 months compared to 6.3 months in the GC combination. And if you look at the overall survival, there was also almost double the overall survival. So these are the important things you should know about this and why this has now become the level one evidence and the first line recommendation in patients with an advanced urothelial cancer. Now, what are the side effects? Now, the important side effects, even if you look at this combination, the side effect profile was better compared to the combination chemotherapy. What they found, the side effect profile was around 55% in them, the patients who underst uh, underwent the side effect. And it was around 70% for those in the chemotherapy in one form or the other. They're mainly talking about the clavendindo grade three or more adverse events. 
Now, what are the common side effects? You must always, always know this. Your knowledge of Enfotumab Vodotin has to be in detail for the upcoming exams. You should be knowing about the most common side effect of Enfotumab Vodotin. Okay, so it's uh, peripheral sensory neuropathy. Okay, and you should also remember it's uh, followed by fatigue and alopecia. And also remember the other is diabetes. Okay. So diabetic related peripheral sensory neuropathy, diabetic ketoacidosis. So if a patient is already diabetic or poorly controlled diabetic, then this enfotumab vodotin is avoided in those patients. So these are the common side effects you should be aware of. So we are now aware of the trial which gave us the first line recommendation for the current management of a metastatic urethral cancer. Now, when we are talking about if the patient is not eligible for enfotumab, in that case, we go for a CPI regimen where we offer GC with an immunotherapy. Now, where does this uh, immunotherapy come from? Which trial? Does this come from the CheckMate 901 trial? Now, they have compared a GC with nivolumab in combination with a standard GC regimen. And according to them, the median survival was better in the combination regimen CPI group compared to the just platinum gemcitabine group, okay? So what they have found is the 21.7 months versus 18.9 months. And if you look at the pro oh, progression-free survival, it was 34% and 21%. So that's the comparison that you need to know and you need to quote in your viva. It's important. The exams are going to take you to the details of the management you are not a, even a urologist is supposed to know this much of trials which are going on and this much of chemotherapy and immunotherapy combinations which are recommended now. The whole discussion on viva on a metastatic urothelial cancer is going to go into the latest evidence, okay? So you, the examiners are very updated and you should be equally updated as well. The combination treatment that has become the is preferred statistically, they have found better outcomes compared to the GC regimen alone. So that's the reason if we go back again, why we have a CPI here, why we have an EV plus pembrolizumab here. And if nothing is patient is not eligible for, not available uh, for this, then we go ahead for just the standard, the previous standard, which is the GC, okay? Now, if the patient is, uh, not eligible for this whole thing okay if the patient is eligible then we go ahead for all thinking about the platinum and all but if the patient is not eligible for any of them in that case we get the pdl1 status okay and then we consider for an atezolizumab alone or pembrolizumab so we can go for a monotherapy with them or we can offer a best supportive care to them so usually the prognosis is not good you have to counsel that and best supportive care is an equally good option for them so we have to look for the other line options, later line options. Regarding the second line options, it's not possible to uh, remember all of them. Just remember a few of them. Second line, S stands for SASI to Zumab. Okay, SASI to Zumab. This is a very important uh, monoclonal antibody. Again, S stands for second line chemotherapy. So what are the second line chemotherapy? You can offer just docetaxel, paclitaxel, winflunin. So these are the other second line options that you can offer. Okay, so when you come second line therapy, remember sacetizumab, second line chemotherapy. And don't forget, we have to remember this erdafetinib. Okay, erdafetinib. So this is uh, mainly for patients who are positive for FGFR receptor. Okay, so you need to get a, so if the patient is not uh if you're planning to start a patient on an erdofitinib, make sure the patient is positive for an FGFR. Otherwise, there is no point in giving an erdofitinib to them, okay? So these are the three things you should remember uh, instead of going through this whole flowchart. If you remember, these are the basic alternative options you are left with. Once you have given the first line treatment, then you, you will be enough. You have enough to uh, justify the your answer to the examiner. Now, what is actually this art of it, uh, this enfotumab vedotin? Okay. If you look at the mechanism of action of enfotumab vedotin, so basically this is a this is an antibiotic. Okay. So what is this uh, where does it bind to? It binds to the nectine. Okay. 
So this will bind to the nectins, the nectins, and then what will happen? This has got MMAE with them. What is MMAE? MMAE are monomethyl or is statin E. And what is the, what does it cause? This is the one which is mainly responsible for the whole action of the drug. So when it binds to the nectin, it will be internalized within the cancer cells. And once it goes inside the cancer cells, it will form a, it will form a, a it will be internalized, it will form a lysosome, and then the MMAE will be released. Again, MMAE is the whole pro, uh, the product which is responsible for the microtubule disruption and the cell death. So the action of the enfotumab is mediated by one of its compounds attached to it, that is a MMAE, and this is going to cause the cell lysis, and that is how the whole uh, action, uh, the whole uh, action happens. Okay, so this is important. You might be asked, what is the mechanism of action of enfotumab with it? What is the most common side effect? We have gone through it, and just quickly go through the algorithm. Where do we get this? Which what is the name of this trial that has now emphasized? Now this is the EV three zero two trial. So just quickly look at this. The first line regimen is based on the EV three zero two trial. The second line regimen, which was based on nivolumab, that was based on Kinote trial, Kinote nine zero one trial. Okay. So the second line was based on Kinote. Uh, sorry, Checkmet. I'm sorry. So the second line was based on Checkmet nine zero one trial. Okay, and uh, so this is the basic thing about the recent updates in the metastatic urothelial cancer. And uh, there are a lot of things that uh, we should be aware of regarding the latest guidelines. Okay, the examiners are really updated and we should be equally updated as well. So I'll be uploading more videos. Thank you. Thank you so much.